So I think it comes at no surprise what the biggest moment in the Star Wars Episode Nine Rise of Skywalker trailer was, which which was. Oh yeah, the Dark Ray moment in the trailer. I think that made us all excited. Maybe not everyone, maybe you right there. Just like, I don't, I don't get what the big deal is. No, but really guys, in today's video, I just want to go over like some of the biggest theories out there. I think these are like the most plausible ones. I mean, there are some, I mean, there's kind of like infinite theories out there, but I've just picked the biggest ones that I think, okay, these have some merit to them. So I'm going to kind of explain them, give my take on them, and just kind of ultimately say where I, I lie. But as always, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below on this at the end of the video after hearing all the theories. Uh, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. For more future Star Wars videos, leave a thumbs up as always. Uh, so the Force will be with you. Always. Now, one of the biggest things that I took out of that moment isn't just like all the theories itself. It's, it's just how I love how different she looks through this dark side corruption, to the point where she doesn't even flinch, let alone blink as she wields her staff lightsaber. I mean, also to the point where I even came across people debating if this was Daisy Ridley, but I... That... that that's Daisy Ridley. But that's what made this point in the trailer so compelling. Not just the fact that she pulled like a friggin' red lightsaber, it's because she looks so creepy to the point where we were all just thinking, is this actually a thing? Could this ever happen? So let's start off with the first theory that, yes, this is just a vision. Now, I know a lot of people out there are just kind of like, oh, really? A vision? You know, we, didn't we get that, like, l last movie? And... I mean, really? Like, the, really? But I do have plenty of ideas behind this. Granted that these are all just theories at the end of the day, but I do think it would be really cool if it was some kind of moment on the Death Star from Palpatine tempting Rey to the dark side. For example, ever since I first saw it, I thought perhaps before we see that very battle in the trailer of Kylo versus Rey, we have moments of where Rey first gets to the wreckage and goes inside a section that isn't perhaps flooded, you know, in that part of the trailer where the waves are really, really high. Um, you could argue that, you know, since the Death Star is ruined there, a lot of the Death Star could be flooded. But due to exploring a certain part uh, before this battle takes place, and due to Darth Sidious's dark side energy residing there, maybe he does just tempt her or just show her a glimpse of how powerful she could be. But yet again, I do admit, isn't that just a bit like, oh cliche like oh is she she wanders on the Death Star, Palpy's just like, yeah, look, you could be this powerful. I mean, why wouldn't Ray just be like I, I don't want to be like that though. Like, you know, that, that may be cool to you, but it's not cool to me. But let's just first address about all the people who are just saying this isn't the case because we've already had a similar Force Vision sequence, for example, with Rey in The Last Jedi with her seeing multiple versions of herself, which leads some to believe that JJ just kind of wouldn't tease us with a similar thing. But is it really a similar thing, given that I think that this moment we saw would be quite different, albeit still somewhat a Force Vision of sorts, whether influenced by like an outside source such as Palpatine or not, it would mirror Luke fighting uh, who he thought was Darth Vader on Dagobah, but ultimately after, you know, kind of defeating him under the mask, saw himself. Like maybe it's kind of a mirage of that moment echoing the Empire Strikes Back. Personally there, I do think it would be different enough from The Last Jedi's forced trip, if you will, to justify another just a vision moment again in Episode 9. But I still think some people will get a bit salty, you know, with the whole, ah, for crying out loud, it's just another vision. But I think it's fine given what I just said with how it will be different from Episodes 8, Force Encounter for Rey. And it could honestly make a whole bunch of sense with Palpatine's involvement in this film, which he's very clearly heavily involved in, but we just don't know exactly how he's still here yet. Also, it wouldn't be the first time Rey has been tempted by the dark side, of course, with instances such as hearing voices in episode 7, like in a novelization version, for her to kill Kylo in that duel with him. Among, of course, other symbolizing moments for the dark side and her, you know, contemplation of it in episode 7 and 8. And now, perhaps in a full circle sense, she quite literally gets to see where she could go with that. But also, just back to mirroring the whole Luke on Dagobah thing, it would be just cool if it was just, you know, a simple force vision with her fighting a version of herself like Luke did. Not not talking about twins or anything yet, but quite literally like what Luke did in Dagobah's cave. Um, that would be pretty cool, you know, to see her fight herself. But what about the next theory? Before we get onto the clones and the twins or whatever and stuff like that, what about if in that scene, Rey does actually go dark, as in they actually do go there? In the last film, they turn her dark, despite episode 7 and 8 building her up to be, uh, you know, her, or just at least establishing her 
and solidifying her in a light side stance. So there is a lot of people saying that this could actually be us seeing Rey going dark in the last film and perhaps the rise of Skywalker is somehow about Kylo going to the light and mixed in with a insert whatever chosen one attachment to Rey that you can think of moment. She inevitably similar to Anakin Skywalker gets called to the dark side while previously just maintaining a footing with her stance in the light whereas for Kylo it's kind of like you know somewhat the opposite maintaining his dark side stance yet you know getting called to the light the whole time thus splitting him down to the core in a similar fashion to what Snoke said uh, in episode 8. I think it should go without saying though at least for me that it would be surprising for sure if episode 9 were actually to completely do something I think most fans wouldn't bet on actually have Rey go legitimately dark but I don't think this will happen it's just too much for the last film to do and wrap up in the last ever Skywalker saga film for them likely to not properly go there anyway maybe or just eventually redeem her in the last you know 30 minutes it would just kind of feel rushed for our actual Rey who we've seen in episode 7 and 8 you know to go for through this whole transformation to the dark side unless you may be now saying but yeah what if they don't redeem her well then crap I, I guess they did it, but that would still be surprising and I still think it would be coming on too much of a character change out of nowhere for Rey to go completely dark side corruption in the film. And I know some people are saying that she still could make that journey in the last film as in our Rey and trying to justify it through, you know, maybe her relation to Palpatine kind of just enforces this whole narrative she's had of wanting to find this purpose and belonging in episode 7 and 8 and maybe after getting a dark side uh, moment with Palpatine perhaps, you know, infusing it with the theory I had with her walking throughout the corridors of said part in the Death Star, she then gets seduced because she's like, oh crap, somehow I have some kind of relation with you um, and I feel some kind of belonging, plus I have had uh, previous, you know, dark side alluring moments in the past, so therefore I go dark. But Honestly, I still just don't buy that personally for so many different reasons. But I'm just going to close that part with I just don't think it's going to go that way. And plus, for the most part, with the footage that we've already seen of Rey, which, you know, of course, I'm not saying that both teasers or trailers show us the whole film. But my point is that we see Rey sticking to the light and path, the second to last film, quite heavily solidified for her from there on out. I mean, we've had those moments already where she's just been like, you know, symbolizing the, the blue and the red. And and, you know, uh, just plenty of moments where now they've kind of, as I said, solidified her in her stance with her white robes, uh, her bl a basic affinity for the light side. Um, but it is also obvious through these trailers as well, whether it's through Sidious, that she will still have some future points of, hey, dark side though. Do you want to go there? But through what we've seen, whether that's on Pasak or whether she's fighting Kylo here on top of the Death Star, which, you know, I have to assume is likely in the third act of the film, quite some time after doing that cool Jedi flip over his ship in the first teaser trail. So for her to go dark in the last 30 to 40 minutes after establishing her character on the Path of Light is not entirely out of the picture, but just a very head-scratching one to contemplate, even if Star Wars were to do this. I mean, this is all just theory and speculation, of course, but for these reasons, I just don't buy it. And then, everyone, we have the next big contender that has echoed throughout the fandom, and I honestly really, really like this one. It is probably not exactly where I land, um, as, as, as you probably gathered by now, I kind of just think it's a vision and I'll get to why it, at the end of the video definitively. But I really like this. But as we all know at the same time, with a lot of theories out there, quite often theories and speculation and kind of put a better product in terms of a story than what actually ends up in the film. Maybe that's not everyone's opinion, but maybe we are all overthinking this. But this theory is just so cool because... What if Rey is real there? She is quite literally real. That is a dark Rey. But it's not our Rey that we've seen in episode 7 or 8, but a clone or a twin. But let's just talk about clones mainly uh, because you can kind of factor in the same uh, theory that I'm about to explain just with it being a twin. Uh, but regardless, bottom line through creation. Now, maybe a lot of you might dismiss this at first because you might be like, oh yeah, uh, another clone theory. Uh, uh, I, I don't think I'll ultimately see myself settling on this one. But I do admit there is a lot of story possibilities to it that if Star Wars wanted to actually make a thing of this in The Rise of Skywalker, it could make sense. So what we know about Rey so far is that she is nothing or nobody. Um, and, and maybe that was just put down to the fact that a lot of people drew out of it is that you don't need to be special or tied to a bloodline to have a strong natural affinity to the light side of the force and all that 
stuff. She was randomly dropped off on Jakku for whatever insert of theory reason you have there. Uh, but what if that was because she was one of a bunch of different versions of herself who was randomly dropped off on Jakku just to have some kind of prospect for a normal life compared to that of what she was in for with whomever she could have been created by, you know, beforehand. She would have been in for a bunch of dark, dark side stuff. Now what echoes this theory even further and makes it very compelling is what we saw from The Last Jedi and how when she goes into the cave to seek the answers for her parents and her origin, she only quite literally gets the answer back of like a whole endless kind of line of rays. It may not have gone on for infinite kind of rays because she did say like I knew this didn't go on forever or something like that but very clearly multiple rays. Now for me and many others this kind of just makes it feel like all the dominoes you know are falling in line with these clone theories because this could be spelling out to us so obviously that yes she technically is a no one and comes from somewhat nothing like her parents weren't presented to her uh, you know as Kylo said she didn't you know come from junk traders that could have been a lie. She is one of perhaps quite a few experiments that is perhaps what the force was trying to tell us in that very scene as in that ultimate moment when we see those figures walking towards the mirror she just sees herself because maybe she she is you know a part of you know the original ray i mean whoever like ray original is um that is why she saw herself because she is one of many potential clones so for these reasons this totally works for me with this context in mind and the reason why she felt as though she was destined for maybe more and always felt a calling is because you know well she could have not just been a random clone she could be manufactured to be like that of the chosen one similar to Anakin Skywalker and perhaps this was all a part of Sidious's plan all along but with this theory there still is the many questions of but just who is she based upon is it like an amalgamation of like different powerful beings uh, you know, uh, she could just be like a reincarnation in a, in a Plagueis sidious -y kind of way like Anakin was. But what if she's combined with different elements of Palpatine, uh, uh, you know, Anakin and, and something else? It, it That just goes on forever in terms of theory land. So going back to the original part of this clone theory is that she does actually face a real version of herself. And maybe this clone of her didn't really turn out like Rey did because she wasn't separated like Rey was. She was given the opportunity to be trained and seduced by the dark side in her upbringing and knew kind of nothing else. Thus, so we see such a scary, corrupt, intimidating, non-flinching, staff, red lightsaber crystal wielding Rey. Dark Rey. But as cool as this sounds, like what point does this really serve if you kind of look at the film in a way that we kind of know about it? Like we ultimately know that this big conflict is to figure out what the end game for Kylo and Rey is going forward past episode 9. Like where is the future of Star Wars going to go in terms of the balance of the force maybe? I mean of course we have the whole threat of Palpatine and this mysterious fleet of Imperial Star Destroyers and how the heck does Palpatine manage to do that and how does he fit in? Like, this is super interesting stuff. But for a random clone Rey to just, like, walk into the story would just feel like a bit of a side boss for her to encounter. I mean, I guess it could give us an answer for whose Rey's lineage and origin really comes from and how Palpatine could be involved in that part of, you know, Rey and this big grand plan that hasn't truly been revealed to us yet. But this is where you can kind of mix in another theory here and how it still is like a clone Rey, but perhaps, and as most things I've set up until now somewhat apply, Palpatine used the body of this Dark Ray to have like an essence transfer in a similar Darth Bane non-canonical version, so he lives on. And this is how he's managed to keep the Empire seemingly around all these years in a secret, kind of biding his time plot. Yeah, there really is still a lot of holes in these theories, such as how is Palpatine exactly still around? Does his dark side energy really reside in the Death Star? And if so, did this grant him the ability to actually possess whomever or whatever draws close to the Death Star? I ask this because you'd have to think if he's amassed a whole entire Imperial fleet as we saw in the trailer with somewhat of a force storm thrown in there as well that people were speculating about, it wouldn't be from the beyond as Sith can't canonically really uh, live on as the Jedi do as Force Ghosts. However, I do want to put it out there, which a lot of people I know would rage about, is that the Rise of Skywalker could change for the first official time with Palpatine being the most powerful Sith um, from what we know of the canonical films, like to actually introduce him being Force Ghost kind of territory. I know, as I said, 
Uh, I've spoke about this before and people hate the idea of that. But what if they do kind of do that, you know? It was kind of explored in some concept art, I believe, for The Last Jedi. There's this mysterious figure thrown behind Luke. But I just wanted to chuck that in there. Other things that just make me think along this line is that we do know as of The Last Jedi, as we saw Yoda do, Jedi can affect the physical world even after death. For example, the sacred Jedi texts being burned. And now in the current trailer amongst the Imperial fleet, we kind of see these force-like storms. And who knows what grounds they could tread now, or new ground should I say, in the last Skywalker Saga film for the Sith. So with regards to that, it's still all a mystery here, but obviously Palpatine is involved in such a way that he can influence an amassing of a fleet. I mean, I kind of refuse to believe that it, this is just like a loyal to Palpatine Imperial group who's been grinding all of these years to get their revenge. Plus, as we know from the Force Storms and the obvious inclusion of Palpatine in Episode 9 and, you know, from whatever detail or another you can use there, he is somehow back in one form or another. But maybe they will keep intact that the Sith can't truly really live on like, you know, uh, Jedi can. But the fact that Palpatine is still around is because he left his dark side taint and it was powerful enough to still have an influence on the real world. But there's definitely some details that we are missing there. Uh, that we can only find out when the film uh, is in theaters. So I know this was kind of like a long rambly kind of fan theory uh, video, but I just wanted to share my take on it. Um, and where do I ultimately fall in line here? I do really, really like the clone theory. I really, really do. I mean, not only because it sounds cool, but it would also make that scene in The Last Jedi that Ryan Johnson chose to do with the kind of line of seemingly endless rays make a lot more sense because it's like telling the, uh, the character, hey, you come from you because you are a bunch of yous in the sense of a clones. But the Star Wars website, and just not only me thinking this anyway, I, th I think it just is a vision. Uh, the Star Wars website uh, described this moment as a, a vision for Rey. And, and then immediately kind of editing that out, taking it down and, and calling it something else. Like getting rid, rid of the word vision, definitely. So that kind of makes you think that Star Wars did kind of F up there and kind of revealed that this is a vision. And if that is true, I, I mean, this hasn't stopped people still theorizing all of these kind of different things. Um, it doesn't mean that it won't be cool. It doesn't mean that in my mind, I see Rey before she battles Kylo on the top of the Death Star trenches because we see the turret there. Um, that she didn't explore it beforehand uh, and she wasn't near the dark side taint of Palpatine and you know then got a, a, a vision from him uh, it, it would that would just still be really cool to see and it wouldn't it wouldn't be the exact same as what Ryan Johnson did with her force vision in uh, The Last Jedi I mean to be honest it is just kind of endless so yeah let me know what you thought but thank you so much for watching guys uh, leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it uh, subscribe for more Star Wars content just like this. Maybe watch some of my other videos like my Star Wars Rise of Skywalker trailer breakdown. Uh, but other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and may the Force be with you always.